Welcome back to the lecture series on bioenergetics of life processes. So, we have finished first two weeks and uh, we have talked a little bit about or sufficient enough of thermodynamics parameters which uh, comes handy while we talk about some of the transformation of molecules and we have a brief introduction about photosynthesis and chemosynthesis. So, today we are starting the third week where these two weeks, third and the fourth week, we will be dealing with four different kind of uh, energy conversion processes where thrust area will be on the four topics what we will be dealing with. We will deal with photosynthesis, the light reaction and the dark reaction. We will deal with uh, <coughs> the process of generation of ATP in the mitochondria, the second energy harvesting or energy utilization system and the governing principle which is dictating both this chloroplast and mitochondria is the chemiosmotic hypothesis and the synthesis of ATP. So, this all this process will go hand in hand. It is not that it will be standalone except we will talk about the role of mitochondria and role of chloroplast separately. So, to start with our third week and the first lecture of our third week, as we have already talked, now we are not talking about chemical synthesis, we are talking about photosynthesis, light dependent synthesis and in between we will always have the comparative pictures of chemical synthesis coming into play. So, to start off with the perennial source of energy is the sun. So, we need it some way or other to trap the sunlight and use that solar energy to conduct or do some useful work. So, in nutshell, if I had to put it, photosynthesis is a process where the solar energy is being used, the energy of the photons is being, is being used to do some useful work using all the natural ingredients. So, the photosynthesis, the raw material for photosynthesis, probably one of the most uh, elegant and one of the most genius move of nature, it uses carbon dioxide and water to start off its photosynthetic machinery. But here having said that carbon dioxide and water, I must say the second component water, this component come much later into the play of photosynthesis because water as a matter of fact act as a source of electron. What does that mean? So, what essentially photosynthesis does? In nutshell, if I if you have to see a photosynthesis, photosynthesis is a process where carbon dioxide from nature is being taken up by plants and it is converted into carbohydrates. So, once CO2 is transforming into carbohydrate, you are adding lot of hydrogen into it. Okay. Now, that process of conversion of carbon dioxide to carbohydrate is a reduction reaction. In other words, you are adding a lot of electron into the carbon moiety. So, that reduction reaction requires a supply of electron from somewhere which will govern the system. Okay. So, essentially the process where CO2 is getting self assembled to a much more larger, much more energy rich molecule which is carbohydrate requires an extra piece of energy in that in terms of it needs electron to make this process happen and this electron source is the first electron source in this game 
is the water molecule. But if you replace water with another molecule which can be a source of electron, you can always conduct this process. As a matter of fact, there were times and even there is situations where even H2S can do that. H2O, H2S, okay, is the same thing as splitting both the molecules. Okay. So, let us start jotting down all the points what we are going to deal with. So, this is our, okay. So, this is our week 3 lecture 1 and in overall this is lecture 11. Okay. So, what we will be dealing with is this is our perennial source of energy which is involved in photosynthesis. Okay. Then we will talk about which happens in an organelle called chloroplast. A organelle which is present inside the plant cells and it is believed that billions of years ago or maybe millions of years ago, this organelle parasitized into the plant cell and become part of it. Okay. Then this is the first level of this is the energy harvesting part what we will be dealing with. energy harvesting. Next inside the cell what we will be talking about. So, I am just putting it this this double membranous structure what I am drawing is the structure of the cell and here you have the structure of the chloroplast inside the cell. So, this is what we are talking about is the cell and then you have another organelle which is close by to it which is your mitochondria. Okay. which is the powerhouse of the cell. Powerhouse of the cell and this process generates lot of energy rich molecules in the form of ATP NADP GTP so most critical one is the ATP okay so these are the generation of energy rich molecules in the form of GTP, ATP, NADP and critical one is the ATP what we will be dealing with and the just okay. okay. 
so the semi-permeable membrane of the cell and this is governed by a hypothesis which was given by Peter Mitchell for ATP synthesis, it is called Kemi osmotic hypothesis. So, these are the four aspects what truly governs what we talk about the bioenergetics of life. Out here the chloroplast, here the mitochondria and this is your ATP generation and governing dynamics is the chemiosmotic hypothesis. And earlier to that, prior to that was the world of chemosynthesis which is still survive and we will talk a little bit in between as we will roll through. So, as we will be going, so this is the overall framework what we are going to deal in the next remaining classes of the course or in the lectures is the chloroplast mitochondria, generation of ATP and the governing dynamics, the chemiosmotic hypothesis. To start off with, if we look at the reaction of the photosynthesis, just let me start out here. If you see the reaction of photosynthesis, reaction of photosynthesis is something like this. As I told you, H2O plus CO2 a simple reaction in the presence of light making CH2O which is the carbohydrate plus oxygen. This is your carbohydrate and this is the byproduct which is the gas which is the oxygen. So, as some people say this is one of the deceptively simple reaction. As a matter of fact, it is funny that nature is deceptively simple. It does things in such a simple way that it take mankind centuries to understand what trick nature has done. I mean, if you look at it, it is fairly straightforward. You have CO2 and you have another product which is fairly reduced. Now, the first question which strike, always strike in your mind that this oxygen which is liberated and it strike everybody, all those who have worked in that area, it always strike this oxygen, is this oxygen coming from carbon dioxide or is this oxygen coming from water? Because if it is coming from water, that means if, if this is true, if this situation is true, then this is a situation where water is getting split, splitting of water. And if water is getting split, if nature can split water somewhere or other, that means if we could understand how nature split that water, then from here one of the byproduct which mankind tries as a source of clean energy is hydrogen. See how everything is linked to each other. So, if somewhere or other by looking at the simple reaction, if somewhere or other if it is oxygen is being evolved by water that it means 
water is getting split somewhere or other. So that brings us people from bioenergy interested in understanding, people from chemistry, people from physics, people from energy studies, people from engineering, biology, bioengineers. They all are keen to understand. As we'll move through, you'll realize that is the oxygen which is coming from water. Everybody is keen to understand how nature does it. And what we know, I'm just giving you the framework, what we know, nature does it in one of the, again, deceptively simple way by something called manganese cluster. which is part of photosynthetic machinery. And to the best of our knowledge, what we know about manganese cluster is, it consists of four manganese ion sitting at different oxidation state and somewhere or other it can entrap the water molecule in between it and could you know like a zipper can split it up unzip it and this hydrogen what is being liberated is that reducing force, which essentially reduces carbon dioxide to carbohydrate. That is what I was trying to tell you. So, if you look at this simplest reaction, so this is essentially reduction. Of course, the assumption that oxygen is getting liberated from water. So, though it is a deceptively simple reaction, but this reaction has inspired generations and it will inspire generations to explore further understanding the whole thing at the angstrom level and the challenge will be to engineer structures engineer something like manganese cluster which can split water because if the day mankind can mimic this whole machinery it can hit upon the food problem energy problem because there are two things we need food and energy that's what govern our life these are the two important thing and if you look at this reaction it actually generates both of them, food in terms of carbohydrate, energy in terms of so many reducing agent which it is producing, which is. So, that is why people have devoted their life in understanding photosynthesis from different perspective, from bioinorganic perspective, from biologist perspective, from chemist perspective, from synth synthetic inorganic chemist perspective, from engineer's perspective because this deceptively simple reaction makes all the difference. Now, what is the role of light? We have not talked about it. There are five elements what I have drawn here. One, the water, two is carbon dioxide, three is light, fourth is carbohydrate, fifth one as a byproduct which is oxygen. And I told you that if you replace this H2S, H2 with H2S, then too the same thing could happen. This may get split up and you still can produce hydrogen which could be used as a source of energy, as a source of very clean energy. So, with this background, I will close in this lecture and the next lecture, we will go to the next phase of it, 
So try to appreciate this simple reaction, what all could be done. It is the dream which is important for you to appreciate that this is how the whole energetics rolls through. Thank you.